Assalamu <laughs> alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It's recording, bro. <laughs> Picture perfect, man. But you gotta work on your frame. I'm trying to get him to understand the frame matters. Alright, go ahead. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. So we're here with our first series. Well, uh, not first series, but it's like we're gonna be talking about uh, what's upcoming. Talking shop a little bit. A little shop talk, little sessions with coach, talk, talk shop, more specifically. Knowledge is wealth. We're gonna do a specific series called Knowledge is Wealth. No. And it'll be like a once a week show. It'll be visual like how you see it, but uh it's gonna be guest appearance in there. We're gonna have definitely, you know, my co host, um, Issa where well, Issa will be there as well. And we definitely got my main man coach. He's gonna allow us to, you know, to use the facility, inshallah, mm -hmm. as well as search and rescue heavy in the building. Um, we're gonna be talking about something that's plugging the, you know, not just our community, but every community. And that is the concept of uh uh, of money of money well, you know what i'm saying like how do we deal with money how do we deal with finance and we want to really delve in you know in touch with some real issues mm -hmm. such as uh what is financial freedom mm -hmm. you know um is it possible to achieve financial freedom in a capitalist society what does that look like um you know deconstructing that uh breaking those things down mm -hmm. what else um would you say financial freedom uh um, the, the concept of balance, you know, what do you take, what do you use, you know, um, taking less, making more, this whole concept, the concept of the money not belonging to you. Yeah, all of those different things, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to delve in that, we're going to delve into which poverty, I mean, what can be considered poverty. Some people think poverty is just the absence, of the absence of money, and that poverty doesn't start with the absence of money. That's one raw form you can look at, but we're gonna talk about many other different forms of poverty. And hopefully, um, by going back to the hustle, one thing about, by going back to the hustle of things, we're able to, um, the foundation things, knowing the definition of them, we're able to actually focus more better mm -hmm. when, when dealing with those things. We so. have a, we, our relationship with money, and uh, it's something that uh, the brother, uh, Eben Anderson, the entrepreneur, uh, we were talking the other day about um, our concept and our relationship with money. You know, a lot of people had experience in the drug trade. A lot of people had experience in the music industry. Um, this idea of fast money, money come, money go. Um, now when, you, when you're when you an adult and, and, and your run is over, and now you have to you know live in society with, with regular wages, regular investment percentages, regular interest that uh, you get from your investments, um, you know, uh, you, people don't have patience for seeing those those particular strategies or seeing those ideas all the way through, because it, it doesn't look like money. You know, um, you know, it's, it's not it's not it's not a bag. You know, and those type of things. So these misconceptions warps your thinking. It warps your ambition. Uh, it, it makes everything boring to you. Um, you know, you don't got time for that. You know, if I could just get this real quick, then. Um, but the then never takes place. You know, you start compounding your problems and, and you don't really uh, uh, offer the proper solutions. But when you see other groups and you say, wow, how can this group can do this and this group can do that and these people do all these different things. First and foremost, their concept of economy, their concept of, of, of wealth and building and finance um, collectively as a group is, 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 is a model for success. Yeah, well, what's called group economics. We're going to deal with that as well talking about group economics. So this is some of the stuff that we're definitely gonna be highlighting. Hopefully, we, you know, this video is not gonna be long. We gotta get ready to go pray. But that's some of the things you can look for. And also, we will be taking open, uh, you know, open questions and yeah. stuff like that yeah. and people input. Mm -hmm. Because honestly, you know, every day we all struggle as far as with the concept of money. And one of the things about money, it, it boils down to, you hear it a lot, is budgeting. And Islam has a concept for budgeting. Like we was telling the uh, coach earlier, the concept of the balance that he mentioned, we want to talk about that. Allah mentioned in the Quran where he says, Aladina lam yusrifu wa lam yakutudu wa kana bayna thalika kawama. In the 25th chapter of the Quran, Allah talks about this in Surah Furqan, that those who place a balance in between, they are not too extravagant, they don't spend over, over their means, and they are not too stingy where they withhold and they don't give, but they have a middle course. And if you look at the capitalist society, you're gonna realize that the secret that lies in 
playing in the capitalist society is the fact that you take less to gain more. If you take more, you will increase in debt more and you gain less. And what I mean by that is, you want to understand, we're going to break this down. Taking less, in other words, is meaning you don't play along with the capitalist society programs. And you might say, hold up, you got to at some extent, yes, but only out of necessity. So they came up with a concept they call frugal. But in Islam, we've been had that concept. You know, whereas though a person, and you see this, a lot of people who have really money, they concept, they, they concentrate more so on what is an asset that brings them more, which is more viable than what is actually, um, you know, far as what is a, not, not a liability, but what is something that is flamboyant or extravagant. It's more volatile. It's, it, 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 go, it goes away. This is it, what they, it's con they concentrate. They're not going to go doesn't out. Have longevity. This not, doesn't, doesn't have longevity. Yeah, like they're that. not going to go out and go spend all of their money on a watch that costs this amount of money, right? And then they walking around with, you know, walking around with your whole advance on my wrist. Like, come on, that's mm -hmm. that flamboyant stuff. You're not going to do that. It don't make sense. Mm -hmm. But if they do buy a watch, that watch got to be something that's going to be an asset that they can actually flip right, right. and bring them back right. onto their feet right. or that they can increase more. Mm -hmm. So we're going to talk about those type of concepts. Mm -hmm. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So taking less is, other words, you're not going to look shiny, meaning the credit game, because you have to understand the capitalist society harpers on credit. They, they, really, they, 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 they feed off the credit. You know, and they, they make money when you owe money. And the Muslim... His job is to not die in debt. So I take on a 30-year mortgage. I take on this, 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 this car payment. I'm living for the lifestyle. You're spending money that you don't even have. So you're living outside of your means. Now you've meet the status quo, but for whose society, for whose community? And then you're not even realizing that you're just nothing but a, um, you're a hamster to the capitalist society. You're that hamster, you're the study case. Because what they pretty much do, even if you look at education, education is not the place you to make you a boss. So we're going to talk about the concept of what is a boss? Is a boss a worker? Can a worker be a boss? Do a boss have to work? Is it excluded from that? And the concept of financial freedom, you're going to see that there are four tiers or four levels when it comes to financial freedom that they have defined what is financial freedom. And they use many different methods the rich has developed. They use nonprofit organizations to escape tax. Because it's all about escaping taxes at the end of the day. And they use what we call um, write-offs and donations as a tax write-off. It's all about keeping the government, Uncle Sam, out of your pocket at the end of the day. How do you create that leisure time for yourself? And the way that we realize that, you're only going to be able to do that if you don't play so much. Mm -hmm. Don't get caught up in the Joneses. The new this, the new that, I have to have this, it's I have to trap. have that. It's all a trap. It's all a trap. You have to rely so much so on the fact of taking less. Your investment's going to be better. We're going to talk about the one-third rule. We're going to deal with that as well. What also, is the one-third rule? Also, uh, yeah, you can tell me about the one-third rule because yeah. that's important. No, we're going to talk about the one-third rule. Mm -hmm. you, you, go ahead but the barter system, the um, barter system which, is a loss, which is a lost trade you know, uh, uh, amongst us in society. Um, you know, we, we'll go to a thrift store and buy something before we'll actually go to somebody and, and, and trade. You know, um, you know, trade, you know, trade for value. Yep. You know, and a lot of times you you complain about not having money, but then you look in your closet. Do you have anything in your closet that you could trade for something that you need? A bill, you know. Um, so when when you're buying a bunch of sneakers, when you're buying a bunch of video games, when you look at the end of the month and you see or end of the year and you say that is a lot of money and things that a lot of things that I don't even want anymore or things I don't even use anymore. It's obsolete. The new version came out. That was 2012 game or 2000. 2019 game is 2020, you know, so that means that the 2019 game is is obsolete. So now when you when you look at those investments, you're spending a hundred dollars at a time, you know, um, how do you how do you you know, how do you uh, find better alternatives to some of those purchases and satisfying some of those needs? Yeah, so as far as the, the win, um, someone asked the win. When we're going to start this is going to be once a week. We're going to come up with a date and a time, and we'll post all of it up and keep you guys uh, informed. Mm -hmm. But it will be once a week we'll be doing this, inshallah mm -hmm. ta'ala. Um, and it's going to be systematic. It's going to go yeah. over subject topics. We're not going to be freestyling. Yeah. No, it's not, um, it's not going to be like that. Like, but be real but, it's, but it's casual. You know, we, want, we want it to be engaging. It's not a lecture. It's not something that, you know, we're not, we're not, we're not uh, promising that we, you know, we, we have it all figured out. And so, understanding that money is not paper. You know what I mean? 
the concept of mon monetary gain, wealth is not paper. Wealth all goes back to ideas, visions, and all of that. That's yeah. where the money is at. That's why we keep saying knowledge is wealth. This is why if you find a household that has a library in it, or children, or even the family that reads and that educate themselves, they are more wealthy than the house that you find with a bunch of gadgets or a bunch of different things in there. If you look at the material that they read, the material, because they are able to advance and use those God-given faculties that they have. And that's what we want to talk about. We want to talk about the concept of Whenever you got money, the first rule you must know is that it's not yours. Mm -hmm. That's a big mistake that all of us make. Soon when we get a check, I work all week and I got this check. I if gotta you give it to this person, I, I gotta give it to that person. You gotta think yeah. that is that check yours? No, there is a hawk. As Abdullah ibn Umar I was telling the brother earlier, Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala he was it was brought to his attention that there was an individual who had two thousand dinars. He said to him that so and so got two thousand dinars and he said, uh, well he's gonna be accounted, he's gonna be questioned about each of the dinar. Mm -hmm. And he indicated in this athar that each dinar he has a responsibility because someone has a hawk to that dinar. Mm -hmm. So whether you gotta feed somebody, whether you gotta you know, children, whether you got, you know, your bills, whether you got this, you have to do everything. So your money is really not your money. Mm -hmm. When do you really profit? You understand? So all of these things have to come into consideration. We're going to talk about all of those things, how and to achieve it, and, and, to, and to know how important that this subject is to increasing the wealth in our community. It takes virtue to know virtue. Mm -hmm. So my story, perfect example, search and rescue store. A person to come in here and, and and if they don't if the untrained eye the first thing they're gonna say is this is a thrift store and it's like to some yeah but to others it's something else mm -hmm. and, and 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 to those others is the people with knowledge do you know art do you know antiques do you know time period you know uh, um sensitivity do you understand ephemerai like what do you know about this process and knowing about the process well now you'll see the value like oh wow this is this is worth this this is worth it. you look it up on your mobile this is this so now you start to change the dynamic of how you shop. It's like, well, I saw that going for this. Now you're not here trying to sell me this for that. This ain't even real leather. So you're going to tell me I'm going to pay that much for leather that's not real versus this leather. Or So those type of decisions, now you'll start to take your merchants more serious. It's like, why am I giving H&M all of this money? Why am I going over here to, to Walmart or Target? And just because I got a discount or just because I paid less or I got a, a, you know, a whole bunch of these things... Um, the, the value is in that. No, the value is in the quality, not the quantity. So it takes knowledge to understand how to take less and get more. Yeah, it but that mentality that he's talking about comes again from this capitalist society. They already put programs in play to have in our minds that we need the latest. We have to be in the latest Jones. And this plays with our psyche and this plays with our inner um, uh, uh, stability, our centerpiece, how are we? And this is why Islam is beautiful because it teaches to have that right center. So we have depression and stuff like that. When an individual would rather go to H&M, when an individual would rather go here or rather go there, if you see a rich person, you're not gonna catch him shopping at the same places you're shopping at. And it's not just because he's going to go buy top stuff that you can't buy. No, he would be at your local thrift store. And you'd be like, why is he at the local thrift store? Because he understands the concept like the, like the brother is saying. He understands he's buying with knowledge. He's not buying with, I'm going to go buy this. I need to buy the latest this. Or latest. That's not the focus. But we don't know that because we're caught up into the program. You understand? They do not design bosses. When you go to school, they don't design bosses. If anyone of you ever read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, or even went through the series, you will see what he was explaining, the difference of going to traditional school in the industrial age, understanding that age back then when it was all about making sure you get a what? You know, 401k or, not even 401k, but making uh, sure you get a retire plan, a retirement plan. Well, no, a lot, a lot of people went to college. A lot of people went to you know college for business management. People went to college for right. these, these, these different but majors. But what he was saying in there, he was saying that as far as your education, Back then, you were you were succeeding because you get into the industrial age by working okay. in one of those steel mill companies or something okay. like that, okay. and you got to retire at that. There's some cushion. The there is some cushion. Mm -hmm. But he's saying now it's not about that. And if you look at it, because we're in an informational age, right. you don't have to do all of that. We, we do, you don't have to try to play it safe. But they're so doing the same thing with information yeah. that they were doing with with that industrial advancement. Yeah, but they you don't have to play safe. A workforce. You understand? You don't have to play safe. When it comes to money, there's a risk factor. Mm -hmm. You know, there's always going to be a risk factor. That's with everything in life. 
and it's always about you know gains and losses at the end of the day. But when do you gain and when do you lose? You know what I'm saying? Is gaining looking loud? Yo, I got the latest this. No, you really lost when you got the latest this and then you come to find out your bank account is not reflecting. You are falling short in your obligations. People who you have a hawk over you, you can't even give them their hawk and anything like that. You fell short. You didn't win. But to you, you win. Why? Because if you look at your shoes, it's nice. If you look at the, the coat you got on, if you look at your will, it helps you it's feel nice. better about yourself. It makes you feel better about yourself. But no, you really lost. And they understand that concept. So right. we got to right. come up out of that and say, right. no. You know, we got a big, and this is where it comes, break down the boys from the men. And it's going to take a lot of, you know, help. Discipline and discipline, discipline. and patience. It's going to take that, it's going to take that you know. Yeah. Um, last but not least, the brother talked about one of the issues that he mentioned was, and we're going to address it, and that's the concept of the heart. The heart plays a vital role in all of this as well. And I know a lot of people don't know because, you know, when it comes to money, man, people will break up with you about some money, man. You know, when it comes to money, he was just telling me about that. Nah, huh? People have lost every moral character that they've grown up and was built on when it comes to a dollar. Ah, I do it. How much? They ask questions like that on social media. Would you do this for $1,000? Would you do this for a million dollars? So I, I think people yeah. already know that the morals go out the window when it comes to dollars. Yeah. Because they don't understand any other way to get it. They don't understand that getting money is spiritual. It's not, it's not how much you, 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 you move around and you dance around. You know, it seems like it because they throw the money at you when you dance around. But when you plan for your money, when you schedule your money, when you're disciplined for your money, when your lifestyle is your money. Well, the one third rule is going to help you with that. And that is we get from the Hadith of Abu Huraira, I know, where the man mentioned what he did with his money and the angels actually made dua for him. What he did with the wealth that he got, he took one third of it and he gave it to his family. One third he invested and one third he actually um, uh one third he actually gave away in charity. So that's why we call it the one third rule. When you have money or have anything, you have to make sure that it's not, you have to understand this capitalist society is about self-interest. Any job, anything that you get is more so about profiting and self-interest. It's not about the welfare or the well-being of society at large. That's the difference between Islamic finances and Western finances. Mm -hmm. You know, we have to cover the five aims or objectives of the Sharia. And no, you don't which have to is, say, which is, you know, we have to cover. That's in the come on, give us the talk. five aims real that's quick, Shay. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to just. So I'm not telling you to go broke. You don't have to say, well, I got, I got, I got this idea and I got money. And I got to go broke because I got to feed everybody else. That's not what we're saying. We're saying don't be, be more selfless and you're going you're gonna to profit more. If you be someone who is more self-interest, you're going to be shrewd and you're going to work the way that these people work. And the rich, remember this rule, and I'll leave you with this. The rich do not remain the rich by helping the poor. I want you to always remember that. The rich do not remain rich by helping the poor. That's not their job, and that's not the way that they work. So they're not throwing you a bone. You understand? Programs out there that you know that's free, that you can take advantage of, they take advantage of those programs, but they're not telling you about them. They're not informing us. They're not in your local, you know, uh, community centers, shops, community centers, mm -hmm. and stuff like Town that. Town hall meetings. You know? They're not there. And even when they were, what were yeah. we doing? We you weren't listening. Attention. That's you another thing. Attention. So we got to take accountability, too. Yeah, so you, you, you have to make sure, you know, that you start learning these things so you can be better. And one thing about me is I like to push that Islam cover every basis. So, yeah, I'm going to be coming from an Islamic point of view. Yes. You can call me the religious dogmatic guy, you know. Because he always mess with me, but um, you know, I'm going to be coming from Islam, inshallah. <laughs> That's what I like to do. But hopefully, stay tuned, inshallah. Jazakallah, kind brother. Jazakallah, Fikram. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.